volume but no frizz. Mm-hmm. This is what I live for. I'm gonna spell all the tea. Let's go. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new, my name is Alyssa Marie. Special welcome to you. Today I want to talk all about tips on how to avoid frizz. That is something that all curly girls go through. So today I'm gonna to go through all of it, what frizz can mean. Why frizz is not always necessarily a bad thing and then also some tips that you can take on in order to try and avoid it as much as possible. So these are tips that are tried, tested, and true. I've got my little tricks and I'm going to be spilling all the tea today. So before we get started, please do make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Just go ahead and hit that button and also hit that little notification bell if you want to get a notification every single time a new video drops. Let's get started. All right, so first things first, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way. Frizz is not necessarily always a bad thing. Usually with frizz, you're getting bigger volume. So the point where frizz really kind of becomes a problem is when it's excessive. So when you have more frizz than you do curl definition, that's really when it starts to look a little cray cray. When you do have excessive frizz, it can be a sign that your hair is lacking something that it needs. Like frizz will be that indicator like, hey, I'm not so happy. Do something about it, please. Usually if my hair gets frizzy, my hair is telling me that it is not agreeing with something that I'm doing. Either a certain technique that I've tried or a certain product that I'm using. And let me just reiterate this one more time for the people in the back. Frizz is very normal. It's a very, very normal thing for your curly hair to have. Curly girls have frizz. That is just a part of the game. That's how it is. But when it's excessive and it's much more frizz than you normally have, that's when your hair is actually telling you something and that's where there's usually an issue. So my first tip for you guys to avoid frizz is to use a satin or silk pillowcase. That can really save your curls, even your skin as well, like so, so much. You're sleeping on there for like eight plus hours a night and when you're sleeping on like a cotton surface, all it's doing all night, all those hours is literally soaking up all of that moisture, all of that goodness you put in your hair is just going to your pillowcase and out of your hair and then boom, you wake up with dry, frizzy curls. So that's definitely something super easy, super simple that you can do right now. Hop on Amazon and order you a satin or silk pillowcase and trust me, it'll change your life. So this actually brings me to my next tip, which is to make sure that your hair is hydrated and moisturized. So excessive frizz will definitely happen when your hair is like super, super dry. So you want to make sure that you're not waiting too long to wash your curls, add that water back into your curls, and that you're using your leave-in conditioners and all of that hydrating, moisturizing stuff that your hair really needs. I would say you definitely don't want to wait longer than a week to wash your hair. But on the other hand, I would also suggest that you don't wash your hair more often than like three or four times a week. Especially if you have hair that's my length. If your hair is a lot shorter, you just have a cute little TWA, then disregard that. You don't have to worry about that too much. When I had my TWA, I was washing that like every single day. There's really nothing wrong with that. And with a TWA, like you really can get away with all that stuff. Like it's really difficult to actually damage your hair once it's that short. But when you have like longer curls, you definitely don't want to be washing your hair more often than like every three to four days. And when you're washing it, that water is bringing back all this kind of moisture to your hair and then you're sealing it in with your products and then boom, you've got happy, moisturized, and hydrated curls. So really the aim of the game here is finding out what works for your curls. So for me personally, I like to wash my hair every four days, four to five days or so, depending on my week, depending on what's going on, depending on if I'm too lazy or not, but I definitely don't go further than a week at all. Like seven days is my 100% max. So yeah, you just gotta work out what works really good for your curls. Some people have to wash their curls every three days. It really just depends on what your curls are doing. But I would definitely suggest somewhere in between four to six days and just see how your curls respond. All right, so next tip, something that you can do right now is to not touch your hair as often. I don't mean to sound like your mama, but if you touch your hair over and over and all the time, your fingers are in your hair, you're twirling your hair and you're fluffing it and you're doing things, like not only will you create more frizz, but you will also like cause a lot of knots in your hair, which is gonna make your next wash day like terrible. So definitely try your best to not really touch up your hair too often. Like if you have it out, just leave it out and don't like have your hands like stuck in your hair all the time. Okay, now this next tip is something that works for me personally and I actually did an entire video on this, but basically I avoid heavy butters and standalone oil products in my hair 100% of the time. Those personally, for my curls, make my hair so extremely frizzy. So like I said, I did an entire video of this, so I'll go ahead, tag it up here, and then also link it below, so you guys can check that out as well if you're interested. But that's definitely one major, major tip that has really helped me have a lot less frizz. 
All right, and then for my last two tips, they kind of go hand in hand. So first, you want to make sure that you're using hold products. And by hold products, I mean a curling custard or a gel or a mousse, something that offers hold for your curls. When you use those products, they really keep the frizz in control. And my other tip was gonna be to apply those hold products while your hair is soaking wet. That has been also tried, tested, and true for me throughout my entire natural hair journey. I always, like it doesn't matter what product it is, I am applying it in the shower while my hair is soaking wet. This not only helps to avoid frizz, but it really also helps to avoid any flaking or anything like that. I honestly don't know why, but seriously, go ahead and try it, and I promise you, you will notice a major difference. It will not only control the frizz, but it will control these curls, honey, and that level of curl definition is gonna be lit. Like, just go ahead and try it, and when I say soaking wet, I mean like soaking. Like, I swear to you, my hair products stay in my shower because I'm just that into doing it while my hair is that wet. So I know I said those two were my last tips, but I do have one more tip, actually, if all of those things don't work and you're still seeing crazy excessive frizz that is just out of control, I would say that you need to do a super, super deep cleanse because frizz, like excessive frizz, is also a sign that your hair is like completely full of just buildup. So a lot of times, especially for low porosity hair, when your hair shaft is a lot more closed, when you go week after week after week of just applying products, if you're using products with silicones, like all of those products will just continue to sit on top of your hair. And without a super deep clean, they literally just sit there on your strands. And then once your hair is coated, no more moisture can get back in, and then your hair is upset, and then eh, frizz. So that is really my last like end all be all, like nothing else is working, help me list, like what am I doing wrong? Start with a major super deep cleanse for your hair and your scalp, and then go in with a super hydrating mask, and then start over and try again, and I promise you, you will see a difference. I did do a video on my entire super deep cleanse routine that I do once a month, so I will also link that up here in the description box below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have any other additional tips or any questions, go ahead and comment them below. And if you did enjoy this, go ahead and give your girl a thumbs up. And wait, before you leave, two more videos to check out right here. Just nice and convenient, just for you. I'll catch y'all in the next one. Bye.